What's going on, all of my Rainmaker fans? I am Jason Roslin back here with another Rainmakers report. It's a big one this week as there's over half a million dollars going out for just Rainmakers PGA Tour. Plus, we've got a UFC fight night mixed in there and a preseason slate for NFL. So we've got a lot going on. I'm going to jump into all of that, of course. But I'll make note that my buddy Byron, my co-host at The Model Media, Twitter is out sick tonight, so you're going to get just me. But here's what you're going to get with just me. All 30 guys, I'm going to rank them for you. I'm going to give you my projected leaderboard, plus some of my top picks based on that projected leaderboard, not just for Rainmakers, but of course, some DFS correlation there as well. So let's go ahead and jump into what we've got going on this week. It is the week of August 21st through the 27th, just a few weeks away from football officially starting here. And we are very excited, no doubt about it. We've got some very cool stuff coming out this week. I teased it last week on the show that we should have our optimizer up and ready. I'll tell you guys about that as the week progresses. I gave you a little sneak peek last week of how it works. So I'm really excited for that. Okay, now, in terms of what we've got for the Slates PGA Tour, we've got the Tour Championship, $350,000 to the regular prize pool. We've got Core getting 3 k to first, Rare at 5, Elite at 10, Legendary at 10, and Rainmaker at 10 as well in terms of what you can win if you win first place there. So some pretty solid stuff. As we move on to our next slate, and it's the FedEx Cup playoff set slate. Now it's round three of that. So $200,000 is going out in that contest. 50K to first, 20K to second, 10K to third. So quite a big prize pool coming in for the last slate of the year. One of the biggest prizes, actually second biggest prize of the Rainmaker season. Of course, the Rainmakers World Champion got a little bit more than that for their first place finish there. Uh, and for the uh, Rainmakers NFL preseason slate, again, you can just win some cards and packs at all different tiers from a Rainmaker all the way through core. And then Lashley, lastly, I should say, Nate Lashley is not playing. So lastly, Rainmakers UFC Fight Night is going on this week, $150,000. There is the total prize pool. You can see the first place prizes listed. 2000 at the core, all the way up to 15000 for the Rainmaker. Okay, let's go ahead and start breaking down our upcoming slate. Like I said, I'm going to go through all 30 golfers. And where I expect to finish, where I expect them to finish on the leaderboard. So let's first start off with where they're going to be playing. It's the Tour Championship at East Lake Golf Club. It's been there for quite some time. It's a par 70, 7,300 yards. The average score does come in under par here. It's, it's kind of a hard course, kind of an easy course. It depends. Let's put it this way. There are low scores to be had. So average score should be under par, even or 100 plus. Remember, most of the golfers, in fact, 26 of the 30 are starting under par as it's a handicap tournament. We'll get into that as I talk about the players. First driving accuracy comes in at about 58% here at East Lake with greens and regulation just shy of 70%. Okay, now let's go on to my predicted leaderboard. We're going to start at the bottom. We're going to talk about Nick Taylor. He's going to be number 30 here for me this week. He's one of only two golfers in the field this week to have lost strokes over the last 13 weeks him and taylor moore who i've got coming up in a little bit he's lost over four strokes in the last 13 weeks so not playing his best the defense salary coming in at 6500 and his playoff set price coming in around eight dollars i think both of those are not really that great maybe the eight dollars in the playoff set can get you some utility but i'm not a fan really of either of those I think we've got guys priced around him that are much better values. Speaking of better values, Steph Straka, in my opinion, at least on the DFS side, much better value. I like him to certainly outplay him this week, but he is starting a little bit behind Nick Taylor. He's coming in at even par, so he'll start one stroke behind Taylor. Still, playoff set price is $11. You can see the market suggests that Sepp Straka is at least worth three more dollars than your Nick Taylor cards this week. But it's priced cheaper than him on DFS. In fact, $1,100 cheaper. 
Zap, one of my favorite DFS options out there if you want to go this deep. Total strokes gain over the 13 weeks is 8.39. Had a couple of good starts mixed in there at the Open Championship and his win at the John Deere Classic. So, like Sepp Straka, quite a bit on DFS, maybe a little bit overpriced on that playoff set. Let's move on to number 28, Taylor Moore. I already mentioned he's going to be starting at one under par and is the cheapest golfer of anybody for this playoff set, coming in at $7.25. His DFS salary kind of matches that of Nick Taylor on $6,500. Whereas total strokes gained over the last 13 weeks is negative 3.65. So really not playing great golf. Blew up last week. It was just awful. Ended up finishing in dead last. I don't know if that just broke his game or what. Still, I'm going to stay away from Taylor Moore here this week. I do expect him to finish in the bottom five of this tournament. Okay, Adam Shank. I'm happy he's here. He's also very cheap. He's coming in at $7 on the playoff set price. But nicely on DFS, he's coming in at $5,200. He's gained over stroke 1.68 in the last 13 weeks. Heads toward the bottom half of the field. Still a very big accomplishment for Shank to get here this year, given the fact that he did not win a golf tournament. Should have won a couple of times. Still, I've got him coming in somewhere around the bottom five here this week. Also joining him would be Siwoo Kim, a golfer that certainly has the potential to come in the top 20 or 15 of this field, but not playing good golf. You can see over the last 13 weeks, he's gained only five strokes, and that's in quite a lot of events. He's going to start the championship at minus two, however, so that does give him a little bit of a leg up. And you can see that the playoff set price and the DFS salary are both up because of that. Around $16 for the playoff set and $7,200 is his DFS salary. Again, I don't think he's playing his best golf. The total strokes gained is, again, a 13-week thing, where over the last three or four weeks, it really hasn't been that good. So I think there's better options than Siwoo this week, especially with his price coming in at $16 for the playoff set and, again, $7,200 for DFS. Okay, number 25, Jason Day. Just not playing good at all. You can see he hasn't even gained a stroke over the last 13 weeks. Still, his pricing, DFS price, $7,400, not very good. However, we know that he can have a spike week, and certainly if he hits a lot of fairways, he's a great putter, that I would be tempted to buy a couple of additions if I needed a last player in a solid lineup, coming in at $11 there on the Rainmaker side. Starting off at minus one again, I think there's a little bit of value there coming in at the uh, in the Rainmaker side. Again, DFS, I think he's a bit expensive. Okay, number 24 is our first of two golfers that does not have a playoff set card. It is Jordan Speed. He's going to be starting the week at even par, but I do like his DFS seller coming in at 6,700. Uh, he was really pressing last week, the back nine. I mean, every shot that was two, three, four, five yards off, he was getting very upset about. Obviously, he takes a lot of stock in getting here to the Tour Championship, has won this event before at this golf course, so clearly can make his way around it. I really like his upside at 6,700. I know he's starting off at even par, but there's a guy that's going to make three, four, five birdies, and it's not like his form is that far off. Again, I think we take the aspect of needing to shoot a score to make the following week, take that element out of it, a decent week here. He's pretty much a sure in for the Ryder Cup team. I don't think he's got anything to worry about on that front. He can just go out and play. And when he can just go out and play, 6,700, you can sign me up for on the DFS side, of course. We don't have a playoff set. Now, looking over the last 13 weeks, Spieth has played a little bit better than some of the guys we've already mentioned. He's gained just about five strokes over the last 13 weeks in his starts. Hit number 23, Tony Finau. He is not playing good golf. Right now, even though he is a top seven there at the 3M a couple of weeks ago, he has lost over two strokes in the last 13 weeks. So I think at the top I said that we had only two golfers. Well, we have three. It's Finau, it's Taylor Moore, and it's Nick Taylor. So Nick Taylor, Taylor Moore, Tony Finau. We've got a little bit of a word play there. But the market says that they like him much better than the other golfers that we've talked about. He's coming in at $19 as his playoff set. Probably 7500 DFS salary. So Certainly, some people expect him to make a little bit of noise this week, but the form is just not that good. So I'm not really convinced here, even though I did pull his Rainmaker card from this playoff set. And uh, we, of course, as part of the prize that you won packs if you came in a certain place, I did that in that pack. 
was a Tony Finau rainmaker card. So I am definitely rooting for Finau to play better and then somehow get himself onto the Ryder Cup team to be able to use that card again. If not, I'm going to have to wait for next year where, of course, the utility will be, will be probably a tenth of what it is this year. Still, it's a cool card to have nonetheless going forward. Okay, uh, let's talk about number 22, Emiliano Rio, who is certainly playing much better than Tony Finau. He's going to start off at even par, though, this week. So this might be a little bit of a stretch, maybe my biggest stretch yet so far. His playoff set price is coming in at $9, whereas DFS salary is around $6,700. Not around, it is $6,700. Total strokes gain over the last 13 weeks is 7.75. That's what I like about him. I think he's playing some pretty solid golf. This golf course should not overpower him. He hits more fairways than the average, which certainly will help him at a course like this. We just saw him. Play decent golf last week. Not great. Again, I think this is my biggest stretch. If I had to pick a guy that I think will maybe underperform these projections so far, I would say Grio uh, if I had to pick one. Still coming in at $9 at the playoff set price. Certainly if he gets that putter rolling this week, that could end up paying off. Still, he'd probably be below Jason Day at this point in terms of who I would actually buy for a final spot. Or he'd be right around Jason Day, I should say. Okay, let's move on to number 21. I see Sam Burns coming in around here. He's come in this place or around it the two times that he has traveled here to the Tour Championship. He's going to start even par. His playoff set price is $11.11, coming in at $6,100 on DFS salary. And here's a guy that, yes, I actually think I want to buy into. Well, the last couple of weeks, he has found a way to produce a return, even though he hasn't been playing his maybe best set of golf. He had a one Great round last week where he basically made up his value in one round. So I think with that, we got a hole in one the previous week. I think signs are pointing in the right direction for him to pay off, say, a 6100 salary or an $11 price tag there. Uh, so I don't expect him to play in the Ryder Cup. So maybe the utility would be rather low uh, on the rain at maker side. Still, as a fifth guy in the lineup, say that's in a more optimal setting. For a guy that can blow up in terms of points and maybe be that fifth guy in a lineup to differentiate a, a lineup that doesn't have a good serial number or total serial number, I think Sam Burns is somebody that you can certainly look to here this week. Okay, now number 20 coming in is the Canadian Corey Connors has not really played well here. So here's another guy, maybe the second going along with Griel that I could see possibly underperforming these projections. He's going to start the week at two under. His playoff set price is 1850 DFS salary coming in at 7900 which I think is pretty average. And he is playing pretty decently in these last two months or so, coming in with just shy of 10 total strokes gained against the fields he's played. Okay, number 19, Tom Kim. I think this golf course, very similar to last week, could just be a tad bit long for him, at least compared to who he's playing against. He's going to start the week at two under. Very similar prices to Corey Connors, around 20 bucks. DFS salary is 7,900. Total strokes gain over the last 13 weeks, as you can see, a little bit down, coming in at 6.715. Okay, let's go on to number 18 here, Ty Rel Hatton. Here's a guy that I think could make a little bit of a move up the board. He's going to start the week at even par or 29th place. Him and Jordan Spieth were clinging to hope that they would make it here this week, and they both did I, I think actually Hatton's in 28th and Speed is in 29th? Sep Straka was number 30, but still, uh, they all start the week at even par. Ty Hatton is $20 in the playoff set price and 6900 in terms of DFS salary and his total strokes gain. If we reach back 13 weeks, which I've done for everybody else this far, well, Hatton still ranks among the top seven in this field. So here's a guy that clearly has shown some top-end form, maybe not in the exact last two weeks, but certainly a guy that we know his top-end form is not far away. So a guy that is on my list that I am definitely playing in DFS this week and certainly would look to add in the in the Rainmaker side in that playoff set contest if I needed, again, a fourth or a fifth guy in the lineup. When pairing them, of course, with some of the more optimal three which we'll, of course, get to at the end of this. Okay, now number 17, Matt Fitzpatrick. Here's my first underperformer based on starting position. He's starting the week at minus four, coming off of a good week at Olympia Fields at the BMW Championship. But still, for me, in terms of DFS, coming in at $10,000, playoff set price around 27. I'm not there. 
Again, just one good start last week, which brought his total strokes gained up. He gained close to three strokes last week. So really, prior to that, he only gained four over the previous 12 weeks. That's just not getting it done, in my opinion, in, in, at least in terms of the prices uh, and salary that he's showing here. So for me, it's a fade. I've got him coming around the middle of the pack this week. Again, his starting position should help him stay uh, around the top 15. I've got him coming around 17, but I'm not accounting for ties outside of the top 10. So, again, kind of coming around, uh, again, anywhere between 17th and 12th here this week. Okay, uh, Colin Morikawa coming in at number 16. Again, this golf course, I've said it before for Tom Kim. I'm going to say the same thing for Colin Morikawa. I think it's a bit long for him, but his iron play has looked okay. His putters looked eh, okay. Again, I think he's all right at his playoff set price at $17.99. That's one that I'd be a little bit interested in, again, to add to my tie at and Colin Morikawa, Jason Day, portfolio of golfers that I think are decent values. Uh, I believe Morikawa will make the Ryder Cup team, so you should be able to get any card that you purchase for him this week in that contest, giving pretty decent utility. Plus, he has played in the uh, Bermuda event, not the Bermuda, the Bahamas event, uh, the Hero World Challenge, at least the last couple of years. So, this event, maybe three tournaments for him of utility, which is not that bad, especially given the price of $17.99. Uh, also, a decent salary of $7,700 for Morikawa here this week. Okay, number 15, I've got Ricky Fowler, the second of two golfers without a Rainmaker card. His salary, though, $9,000. Has cooled off the last couple of weeks, though. Starting the week at minus three, I think he's going to end right around middle of the field maybe climbs up into the top 10 again we got to the pinnacle we've seen this a couple of times in the last few years where a golfer has gone into a slump come out of it gotten a win and maybe tailed off a little bit after that win we've seen it with fowler recently not playing terrible but certainly not playing to the effect of gaining 15 strokes against the fields he's played against over the last 13 weeks certainly we're at the tail end of that 15 strokes gain so for me, 9000 pretty hefty price tag. I like guys that are even starting at the same score or above him and are the same price or slightly more expensive on the salary side. So maybe not a full fade for me this week on Fowler, but probably underweight in terms of projected ownership. Okay, number 14, Keegan Bradley. I think maybe this guy's got a chance to outperform his starting position. He's going to start at minus three and a guy that I am definitely adding to my playoff set if I don't already have additions, which I do have a couple of of. He's coming in at $12.75 for his floor prices, which is quite the variation to his DFS salary, which is $8,100. I mean, he's priced nearly like Sepp Straka, who's coming in at $11 again upon recording this. They're separated by $2,700 in DFS salary. For me, I'm going to get my exposure to Keegan on the Rainmaker side, I think if he's got a good week this week, which is where, we're, of course, we'll get the return on our investment, if he gets into the top five, I know that may be a big stretch. I think he could be added to the Ryder Cup team as kind of an outside candidate. So uh, take an eye on Keegan Bradley, 12.75. I think there's some upside that he had on that Rainmaker's price. Total strokes gain over the last 13 weeks, not great, coming in at 7.145. That does include the Travelers Championship win there, I think. It might just be outside of it, actually. Still, we know that he can do it. And the putter was getting relatively warm last week at Olympia Field. So if he can get the ball strike and rolling, maybe he's got a chance. Okay, number 13 is the local guy, Sun JM, who bought a house here a couple of years ago in the Atlanta area and has played well at this golf course in his two previous trips. So Although he's not playing good right now, only getting about 4.295 strokes over the last 13 weeks. Don't love him here this week, but of course, history angle and the local tie has kind of got me into, all right, he's going to finish in the top half of this field. He has shown signs over the last two weeks as well that he's played better than what those total strokes gains suggest. He had a couple of missed cuts in there, so that kind of Obviously, weights it down quite a bit. 8500 on the DFS salary, 2850 on the playoff set price. You can see the difference. Keegan Bradley coming in at 1250 8100 DFS salary. Sung Jam, 2850 and 8500 You can see only a $400 difference on DFS, but a $16 difference in Rainmaker. So if I was going to play these two guys and compare them with each other, I'd go to Bradley on the Rainmaker side. I'd pick Sung Jay here for the DFS side. 
Okay, Lucas Glover is coming in at number 12. Playing great golf. I'm not going to take anything away from him, but I think this is when we regress a little bit here this week. We saw signs of that kind of happening last week. But we're going to get it here this week. Because starting the week at minus five, his prices are still high. Total stroke scan over the last 13 weeks is 11.185. I don't want to take anything away from this guy. It's an unbelievable one that we've seen from this 43-year-old. But I think, again, it ends. He's going to start the week inside the top seven. I think he trickles down a bit just outside of the top 10. And if he's outside of the top 10, that $37 is just not worth it, and neither is the 9600 So it's it's a non-play for me this week for Glover, but good for him for his run. Uh, maybe he gets a Ryder Cup nomination at the end of this. Okay, number 11, Russ Henley is playing some good golf and a guy that we've seen play good golf in recent years, so I do like him. Coming in, starting the week at minus three, his playoff price is uh, playoff set price, $27 roughly, $8,300 on DFS with a total strokes gain coming in over 12 and a half over the last 13 weeks. Really good, really strong golf for us. Henley, love him for DFS. Maybe slightly pricey, just again, based on saying Keegan Bradley at 1250 coming in. Uh, I think he, Russell's totally fine for the playoff set price, but I do like his DFS side a little bit more. You pair him up with one of those cheaper guys that I mentioned, even Jordan Spieth and Seb Straka, and you've got a chance to get two of the guys that we are going to predict are going to come in the top 10. We'll get to here in a second. As Brian Harmon is going to be number 10. He's going to start the week at four under. And had a chance last week was certainly in the mix for a little while. So here's a guy that I just came down to and said, man, Brian Harmon or Wyndham Clark for ninth and, and Tommy Fleetwood for eighth. Those were my three guys that I said, I think they're a peg down from the top seven here this week. So I put Brian Harmon at 10. I think he could finish. As high as sixth or seventh, however. So I think there's a little bit of room to understand that the playoff set price coming in at around $40 is still decent value. $9,400 on DFS salary, maybe a tad expensive, but not all that much. Given that he's gained over 14 strokes over the last 13 weeks of fields he's played against, so we know about the Open Championship win. Again, we, we kind of popped into form last week with a good finish. So I do like Brian Harmon this week. Again, I think I, I see him coming in a tie for seventh or sixth with a couple of guys that I'm going to mention. And the first one we're going to talk about is Tommy Fleetwood. Not a great week last week, so that's why I've got him coming in at nine, although we've seen him compete very, very strongly here in the last couple of weeks, gaining over 16 strokes without a victory on his card over the last 13 weeks. That is some very strong play. And his play on set price is $23. I'm a firm buyer there because not only are we going to get him this week, we're going to get him at the Ryder Cup in a few weeks as well. So in terms of a two-week guaranteed utility out of a golfer, Tommy Fleetwood is the best price, the best value on the board this week. He would be, honest to God, he'd be the first guy that I would buy of anybody if I needed another player for the playoff set. Again, and I'm recording this at about 6 o'clock roughly on uh, Monday. Prices could change throughout the week when people kind of catch on to that. But still, if you've got a chance to buy under $25, $30, it's a definite buy for me. Uh, Two-week utility plus an opportunity to get inside of the top eight this week, which would put them just outside of an optimal lineup setting. So like Tommy Fleetwood a lot. Uh, Wyndham Clark is the next guy in this bunch. He's starting at minus four this week. Saw him get back a little bit of form last week at Olympia Fields, which is, of course, that is set up a little bit better for him than, say, uh, the FedEx St. Jude, which played at TBC Southwind. Again, I like Eastlake set up much better in terms of the layout of the course for Clark. $9,100 on the DFS salary and $3,200 on the playoff set. He's playing a little bit better than the 7.895 strokes that he's gained over the last 13 weeks. Again, we saw some good form last week, plus we saw a good finish to his event two weeks ago. So maybe a little bit of momentum for Clark here. That's why I've got him coming in the top 10, probably towards the bottom end of it, but still I expect a good showing from him. Now, number seven, these are the guys, these top seven guys, I think eight, you're going to see in the price right away. Why I've kind of separated them and why I'm not the only one that has separated them, but the market has as well. 
Tampa is going to start off at minus four this week, coming in at $70 roughly for the playoff set and 10800 in terms of DFS salary. And all of these guys are playing very good right now. Cantley over the last 13 weeks has gained 14.745 strokes. Hasn't played great here, but the last two trips, a seventh and a fourth uh, here at East Lake. So I think we're starting to find it out. We're at a good starting score. It puts us, you know, tied for seventh. So I expect Cantley to kind of finish right there. It's not playing maybe superbly, or maybe this golf course isn't as good of a setup as TPC Southwind is. Still, I expect him to make a run. I'd definitely be putting him in an optimal lineup here this week if I had the chance to. I do have a pretty low serial card. He will be going in my first lineup. Although I think he's on the outskirts in terms of guys that you can consider for captaining. I just can't see him making up six strokes against Scotty Scheffler or three against Rory McIlroy. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit more attainable. But still, uh, it's just on the outskirts for me this week for Cantlay. In terms of a captain spot on Rainmaker, DFS at 10800 going to need to score a lot. So. If you can pay the salary of 10800 it's likely he's going to be captaining that lineup or the most expensive golfer in that lineup. So uh, maybe correlate that with him in the captain spot for the Rainmakers. Okay, number six, or in a tie for fourth. This is when I introduced the first tie at Sanders Shawfly. It's going to start the week at minus three, but a guy that has gone very low here at the Tour Championship, in fact, could be given a win as he had the lowest score to par a few years ago. But, of course, with the handicap start, he didn't end up winning it. It's coming in around $68 as well, so right around the same price as Cantlay. A little cheaper in DFS, 10500 and he's gained about 13.4 strokes over the last 13 weeks. Hasn't played his best golf, but, again, we saw him break out last week and – has played better than Sam Burns, a guy that also I said broke out last week with a really low round. And if we get two low rounds from Chef uh, from Shaw play, not Scheffler, probably Scheffler as well. But if we get two rounds, two low rounds from Xander, he's going to be very close to that optimal lineup. So he is a guy that I am playing pretty heavily. Okay, also tying for fourth is Max Homa. This is more of a form play than anything else. He came in a Came in fifth place here last year, so clearly the course can set up good for him. And he's just playing good golf right now, starting at minus four. So right around where all the other guys we just talked about are starting. Playoff set price, though, you can see it's going up. 8250 is the floor price for Max Homa right now. DFS salary is 10900 and we are definitely on the higher side of his total strokes gain over the last 13 weeks, which comes in at 12 over the last two weeks, we are certainly, uh, like I said, on the higher side. I think we've gained roughly six strokes against the field in our last two weeks here for Homa. So uh, trending in the right direction. Don't want to fade that, especially given the fact that he has good course history here. Has a good starting score. Going to need to play aggressive. So all aboard Max Homa. Might even consider him in that captain spot. He would be a guy that if I had an optimal line of setting with the worst serial numbers, Throw home in the captain spot, and that might just be able to do it for you. Okay, uh, last guy I see is John Rahm not playing good golf. You can see over the last 13 weeks, he's only gained eight strokes against these fields he's played against. If you had taken his 13-week window at the beginning of the season, the numbers would be very close to what we're going to see with the top three golfers. So for that reason, maybe I'm a little bit down on him. As you can see, in terms of the playoff set price, the market is as well, coming in below $100. He's been above $100 basically the whole playoff run. And now his prices are coming down versus the other three guys I'm going to talk about are actually going up in price, even though there's only one week left. So certainly the market is saying hey, we don't think John Rahm has a good, as good of a chance as the other three uh, golfers here this week to be in the optimal lineup. Still starting at minus six, I mean, that's going to put him way above the field. I can't imagine uh, that many of the golfers will catch him. We saw some bright spots last week at Olympia Field. So I wouldn't be fading John Rahm this week. I know he's a bit expensive in the DFS salary, but still, I, I certainly might be adding him. If you need one more optimal guy, he is the cheapest of these four. So it would come down to deciding between Rahm, Cantley, and Shoffley. I can understand going to the other two as well. But still, Rahm should it be firmly in play. Okay, now the top three. I've got Victor Hovland tying for second place here this week with a starting score of minus eight. He'll start in second place, coming in at $125 uh, on the Rainmaker side and $12,500 in DFS. He's playing so good over the last 13 weeks. He's gained over 20 strokes against the field. 
crazy. And that nine holes last week to win the BMW Championship was something out of the record books. 11 threes in his Sunday round. All the momentum in the world for Victor Hovland. This guy has got unlimited potential if he can figure out his around the green game, which he has a lot this year. This guy is so good. His ball striking is incredible. I expect him to be there until the last few holes, along with Roy McIlroy, who has done everything but win here in the last couple of weeks. His top seven run is incredible. He's playing such good golf. But I don't think he's going to be able to make up three strokes against Scotty Scheffler right now. But before we move on to Scheffler, we're talking about McElroy. $122 for his playoff set price. DFS salary is 13 with total strokes gained. Get this number, 27.155 with the last 13 weeks, which is slightly below Scotty Scheffler's, who has 27.535. And if you take out putting, He's gained over 30 strokes, total strokes over the last 13 weeks. It's absolutely insane. 13400 is his DFS salary, and 185 was his floor price right before I came on here. He is going to start at 10 under par. Crazy how good he's playing this week. So there you have it. There is the 1 to 30 projected leaderboard for the Tour Championship this week. I did it in 30 minutes. That's pretty good, you guys. Uh, if you know me by now, I can talk pretty quickly at times. If you want to listen on 1.5x, well, all the more power to you. But given how quickly I speak already, I'm not sure you want to do that. Nonetheless, we've got a huge week this week. Again, we have a regular Rainmaker slate, $350,000 in total prize and going to that. Plus, we have $200,000 going to that playoff set gated contest where you can win $50,000 in the top prize. So after going through all of those prices, if you can make a lineup, say we're going to start with Roy McIlroy, we're going to fade Scotty Scheffler for whatever the reason, or if we even want to start with Scheffler and not go Roy, you can make a lineup for roughly around $200, maybe a little bit more expensive, and have a great chance of winning uh, that 50 k up top, about the same number of entries that you would be facing in the $200 contest for DFS. Roughly about 3,500 entries is what we expect. That's pretty much almost identical to the DFS contest that features 50K up top for a $200 buy-in. Plus, the nice thing is also on the Rainmaker side, when you spend the money on these lineup or these cards, you own them forever. So if they happen to all play in the Ryder Cup in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to put them in those contests. Plus, if they play at the Hero World Challenge, you'll be able to put them in those contests for that slate and you'll get them for all of next year now again you're only going to get about 10 percent equity in terms of what you got for them this year and what you're going to get from next year so let's just give you for example you can win about ten thousand dollars on any given week for a first place prize for this year's pga expect something like a thousand dollars next year still nonetheless for the chance to win 50k on the lineup this week plus a, maybe one more contest this year and a bunch more next year the opportunity for you to make a return on your investment, investing the $230 this week versus the $200 on, on DraftKings for DFS is much, much higher. So take that into account this week. That is my one selling point for all of you that do enter that $200 contest. Take a look at Rainmakers. You can win the exact same first place prize. Plus, again, you own these cards forever. So. I think that'll do it for me here this week for the Rainmakers Report. Again, stay tuned. We are going to have a special edition of the Rainmakers Report coming out this week. We'll have our big launch show for our products. We are so excited about this optimizer first in class uh, technology here. It is superb for all of you that play, for all of you that don't play. It's going to make it way easier and way less time consuming. I can guarantee that. Okay. Good luck this week, everybody. We will see you back in a couple of weeks for the Fortnite Championship and the Ryder Cup. Of course, before that, we've got Week 1 NFL. So I'll be back before you know it. And until then, everybody, good luck. We'll see you on the other side. Cheers.